So Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What's your occupation? They said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. They said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come, for thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren have come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. And if thou knowest any man of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. In other words, here is an occupation that apparently in Egypt was not popular, being shepherds. And also, it would seem here that Pharaoh needed someone to take care of his cattle. Now, the famine was worldwide, and the seriousness of it is revealed because it's now affecting the land of Egypt. You see, the land of Egypt depended upon the flooding each year from the Nile. Well, there's no flooding from the Nile. And as a result, why, even Egypt was suffering. But Joseph had already gathered up the grain. Now, we find that Joseph presents his own father. And I want you to notice this. Jacob now stands in the best light that we've seen him in in the entire course of our study here of him. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Notice that. Jacob now is in the place of blessing Pharaoh. He's beginning to live up to his name. You see, he's a witness for God. And the less is always blessed of the greater. And he blesses him in the place, you see, as a witness for God. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? Now here is the very place that if Jacob was asserting that old nature that he had at the beginning, here would be the place to say, well, I tell you, I'm 130 years old, and I want to tell you, Pharaoh, I have really seen things. I'd like to tell you about the time I put one over on my brother Esau. I'd like to tell you about how I did this and how I accumulated a great deal in the land of Haran and how I finally made a deal with my father-in-law. and Then how I met Esau. And, oh, he could just go on and on and on. And he could brag about his family. I got 12 sons. But listen to him now. He's a different man. Listen to Jacob, friends. And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty years. Now, that's how old he was when he came down to the land of Egypt, friends. He was 130 years old. We'll find when he died, he's 147. He spent 17 years down at the land of Egypt. And seeing Joseph and coming down to Egypt at this time, this man who was right on the verge of death, I think he had one foot in the grave, the other foot in a banana peeling when he came down there. He was about ready to die. But now he lives 17 more years, having found out Joseph is alive. Now listen to him. Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage a 130 years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been, and I have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. Here was an opportunity for the old man to boast. My, he could really tell a few tall tales at this point. And if he'd been the same man that ran away from his home up yonder in the land of Canaan, he probably would have. But now all he can say is, I'm 130 years old and my life is not anything to brag about. Few and evil have been the days of my life. And now another thing. I put one over on my father. Is that what he says? No. He says, I have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers and the days of their pilgrimage. I don't measure up to my fathers. Does this sound like the same old Jacob that we knew at the beginning? No. 
It's a different man now. He's changed. He's giving God the glory for his life, and he's making no appeal that he has accomplished a great deal. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And I think, frankly, that he's arrived here. Here's an opportunity for him to boast, and he certainly doesn't take advantage of it. And somebody else might have said, well, now I want to impress Pharaoh, who I am. Pharaoh's a great ruler, but I want him to know I was a pretty big man up yonder in the land of Canaan, but not Jacob. He says, my days have been evil. I've been a sinner. <laughs> Nothing to brag about, save by the grace of God. I get a little weary about all oh, today. You hear so much boasting on the part of many Christians, even in our fundamental circles, how we attempt to applaud certain men for what they've done. We talk about how great they are. Well, if we all told the truth, what we'd say is we're just a bunch of sinners and we have anything to brag about except we have a wonderful Savior who's been gracious and patient with us down through the years. And friends, that's all we have to boast of. That's all that any of us here today have to boast of, to have a Savior slain for us. And we can't say we're superior to our fathers. I remember years ago... a friend of mine, he's a seminary professor, he was telling me, because I think every boy, and I guess girl, goes through this period of life in your teens, you're sort of ashamed of your parents. They're just not hip, you know. They're not up to it. And so this fellow was telling me, he says, you know, when I went away to college, why? He said, i be honest with you, I was just ashamed of my dad. And his dad was a preacher, by the way. And he was coming to the college to speak. And he said, I pretended I was sick. Couldn't even go the time he spoke in the school because he said, I just didn't want to be known as his son. And I was ashamed of it. Then he said, you know, I spent four years in college and then went into the business world for a couple of years. And he said, I want to tell you, I had a rough time. And during that time, he said, I changed my thinking about my dad. He said, I had thought for a while, the old man, he just not capable of making a living for us. And he seemed to do pretty well. Certainly, he was an outstanding Bible teacher, but I thought he was pretty stupid. But he said, you know, after I'd been out in the business world and faced up to a few things, he said, I came home. And he said, my how my dad had improved. No one had ever learned as much as he'd learned in those brief years I was away from home. He certainly had grown. And he said, frankly, I had come to the conclusion that he's a lot smarter man than I thought he was. Well, that's the thing many of us would say, but not Jacob. Jacob takes this humble place. And he's a different man here. He's a changed man. 